Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back. This is History with Character, and I'm Alex. So today we're going to be working on floofy, frilly underthings, and I'm super excited. So Victorians, from what I can tell, were really big into lace and trim and embroidery and basically make it fancy. And that's what we're here today to do. Now, just as a reminder, I do this as a hobby. I don't have a degree in this. I don't have a lot of access to primary text or text that you would really only find in university libraries. That part of my life is over and I'm doing this for fun. So that's what we're doing here today. We're doing a historically adequate Victorian petticoat for my upcoming 1870s Haunted Mansion inspired ensemble. I'm really excited to show you how this one goes and hopefully you will be too. So without any further ado, let's get going. So first things first as always is cutting out and pinning the pattern and then cutting out the fabric pieces. For this truly Victorian pattern, the pattern actually comes with multiple pattern pieces in the same envelope and a lot of them you actually just cut differently for different pattern styles. So in this case I had to fold my pattern piece to preserve it in case I want to use those pattern pieces later on, then pin it down and cut it out. I'm using a 100% white cotton broadcloth for this. This is just because silk is really expensive and I'm already over budget on this project as it is. Now you might be wondering, hey Alex, why aren't you using a black fabric for this since it is an ensemble based off of the Haunted Mansion? And that's just because I want this to be more versatile and be able to be used under multiple ensembles. In addition, black petticoats may have been a thing, but I couldn't do a lot of sourcing for everyday black petticoats. For the ruffles, because they were all the same rectangular shape, I just folded the fabric over multiple times and then cut out the pieces all at once. This was pretty tough. I think my scissors need some sharpening, but it got done. Once all the pieces were cut out, I used my chalk and a quilting ruler to mark the darts and other important markings on the fabric. Now, if you hear me sniffle or if you see me rub my nose or anything like that, just know that it is pollen season and North Carolina is not known as the land of the longleaf pine for no reason. I'm allergic to pine pollen and I am not sick, I promise. First things first was to stitch all of the darts. I usually stitch from the point out and then back stitch at the edge and tie the point. This just leads to a nicer finish overall. And then I just had to stitch all of my pieces together. Starting with the backs, I just stitched them pretty far up. I left about eight to 10 inches open on either side for the closures. On a semi-related note, if you look at my fabric, you can kind of see that it's got kind of a crinkly, crepey texture. If anybody knows how to iron fabric to get it to not do that, please let me know in the comments. I have a shirt that is like this almost permanently. I cannot get it to iron flat and I would really love to have a more crisp finish to this petticoat, that shirt, and all of my cotton garments. I ironed the back seams flat and then would hand stitch them down later as a finish. Then I had to stitch all the sides together to the front to make the loops. Now this petticoat is built with a yoke, a flounce, and a ruffle. 
So this whole part is the yoke, which sits at the waist and over my hips with the flounce and the ruffle going from my hips down to the floor. The flounce and the ruffle provide a little bit more structure and shape to the petticoat. Then I had to stitch the flounces together. ironed seams to one side, graded them, and then stitched them down by machine. Because I'm putting in a ton of insertion lace, I figured that would be the easiest thing for me to do. Here you can see me stitching down the flounce seams to provide for a finished seam. Even though this does show have machine top stitching, because of the insertion lace, it's not super obvious, so I was okay with doing it here. So I just finished pinning on the insertion lace and uh, it's very, very pretty. I'm waiting on some thread to come in so that I can stitch it on. And this is the lace that I bought to be an edging lace for the petticoat. And I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. It's so pretty. Um, let's see if I can get it spread out so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, I mean, it's it's fairly simple, but it's also very pretty, and I like it a lot. The problem is, I'm pretty sure there's five yards on this bolt. And i also pretty sure that I ordered five yards of the insertion lace. And, uh, the insertion lace, I just barely had enough. I think I had maybe a foot and a half left. Um, the ruffle is going to be about twice as long as the flounce is. So basic math tells us that if five yards just barely covered four panels, then five yards is not going to cover eight panels. That's, that's how numbers work. So I'm going to have to buy some new lace, which is fine. This lace is very pretty, but it's also, like, I feel like such a snob saying this. It's the wrong shade of white to fit in. Um, so my actual garment is pure white. It's very, very pretty. I love it. But the insertion lace is more of an ivory or an eggshell. And this lace is also just white. So, um, I think I found some that I like almost as much, and, um, Mood has been pretty good about getting my orders to me fairly quickly. The only problem I've ever had with Mood is that they'll send me a, a confirmation number and then a shipping number, and then the shipping number never updates. So, it's just a game of, is my package in the mailbox today? And, uh... So the good news is I don't have to deal with the edging lace for a while yet um, because the next steps are going to be putting in the insertion, cutting out the fabric underneath the insertion, finishing those edges, um, pleating or gathering the flounce to sew to the, like, the yoke, I guess is what we're going to call it, and um, then I get to deal with the ruffle and that edge. So, we've got a little bit of time before that's going to be ready. Um, so, I guess we'll see what happens. I pinned the insertion lace into place off camera and I needed to baste it down using a black cotton thread and long running stitches. This was to both keep the lace into place while I cut out the cotton fabric from behind it, and also because I am clumsy and I know I would stab myself multiple times if I left those pins in place. This process took a little bit of time, but it was well worth it in the end.
once the lace was basted down, I cut out the cotton fabric from behind it very, very carefully using my embroidery scissors. You can see I kind of braced my thumb underneath the blade to prevent my scissors from accidentally catching the lace. I do want to get a pair of the duckbill applique scissors at some point, but um, just haven't gotten around to it, honestly. Once the cotton fabric was cut out from behind it, I did a double fold of the roughly half inch that I cut out and stitched it down to the lace just to make a nice finished seam on the back side. Now I would do a couple of peaks and valleys and then flip it over and pull out the basting thread where I needed to. This just made things a little bit easier and I used the tips of my embroidery scissors for a little while, but I was so paranoid that I was going to accidentally catch and cut the lace, I eventually switched over to a tapestry needle. Now this lace is a, just a straight up polyester, I think, and I knew I had to be very careful when I was treating it versus treating the cotton of the petticoat itself. Now the lace came in, I think, a three yard bolt, and so I had to be sent two pieces of lace to make the full five yards. When I reached the midpoint, I matched the motifs as best as I could and stitched them down just with a small whip stitch. It blends in pretty well, but it's not perfect. Then my boyfriend and I decided that I was very stressed out and I needed a beach vacation. So we went to his beach house and I did a little bit of stitching while I was there, not as much as I had planned to. Stitching in the hammock is very comfortable, but it's also very awkward and I didn't get as much done there as I thought I would. And besides, at the end of the day, there were some more important things that needed to be done while I was on this little mini vacation. Uh, starting with just relaxing. I was very, very stressed out. I, my anxiety was acting up and honestly, nap time in the hammock was great. But we also had another member of our little group that we needed to keep in mind. And there were some important things that we needed to take care of with him. Important things like taking him to the giant sandbox where he can dig wherever he wants to. He's such a handsome boy. My towel was definitely not covered in sand when we first got there, but he was having such a good time. I can't be too mad at him. Once we got back home, I settled down at my computer for even more insertion lace stitching. This process took me a week and a half to do. It, each panel took me about two hours to stitch by hand, and I only get a few hours a day to really spend on this kind of thing, so it was a very slow process. Once all of the insertion lace was in, I had to sit down and do math, which I haven't had to do since I graduated from college. Basically, because I put in the insertion lace, it changed the dimensions of the flounce slightly, and I had to figure out how many pin tucks I needed to do to bring the entire petticoat back to its original dimensions. Hey Alex, you're measuring in the wrong spot. Okay, so the math on this makes sense to me, but I also have a master's degree in a social science and um, don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to numbers. So um, based on my calculations, with the addition of the lace to this petticoat, 
I'm going to need to lose about seven inches off of the petticoat somehow. Um, knowing that pin tucks take up an inch of fabric per tuck, I could put in seven inches, or I could attempt to, or I, I could put in seven or seven tucks to take up seven inches, which could work. I just don't know if there's enough space on the flounce to be able to do that. The other thing would be I could possibly shorten the ruffle a little bit, but the ruffle is only seven inches long as it is, so I don't want to shorten that too terribly much. Um, I could cut two and a half inches off of the ruffle to... Um, thought gone. I could cut two and a half inches off of the ruffle, which would equal out to the amount of lace that I'm adding to it, which may be a way to go. I just don't know that I trust myself to cut that much fabric perfectly straight line, which is what it would require me to do. So, um, I do know that I'm going to have to put in some pin tucks. I was hoping to get away with it without doing pin tucks because I really don't like dealing with them. They are frustrating to me, but if it's got to be done, then it's got to be done. So I guess I will be looking at the best way to install these pen tucks. The pattern does have locations marked for the pen tucks, but since I added the lace, those marks won't work. So I'm going to have to figure it out myself, which is fine. It's whatever. Um, why do I keep doing this to myself? In the meantime, I decided to do a little bit more hand stitching and finish all of the seams on the yoke. I graded them down and folded the longer edge over twice to fell down and cover up those internal seams. I like having hand sewing to do while I'm doing other things like playing D&D with my friends. It gives me something to do while I'm not being asked to play and keeps my attention on the game instead of on my fidget fingers. I stitched the pen tucks into place. I decided to do seven pen tucks, though I didn't have enough space on the flounce to do all seven. So I did three above the insertion lace, two below the insertion lace, and then two pen tucks on the ruffle itself. This led to a very cool look, and I was able to get it done, though it was a very boring process just stitching in a straight line like this. My absolute favorite part of doing pen tucks, if I have to pick one, because I don't, I still don't like doing them, is getting to iron them flat. I love how it looks when you take it from the kind of chaotic sticking up in all directions to laying completely flat. I did have to be very careful because I didn't want to accidentally melt or scorch my lace. I have, in the past, melted polyester fabric, zero out of 10, do not recommend. It is such a pain and I wanted to make sure that didn't happen here. Once all the pen tucks were sewn on, I really quickly stitched the flounce into a circle using a French seam. I stitched it about a quarter inch away from the edge, trimmed that down to about an eighth of an inch, flipped it inside out, and stitched again about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. This meant that the interior seam would be nicely finished and I didn't have to worry about fraying later on. I forgot how much I like doing French seams when it comes to seams like this where there's a bunch and you don't necessarily want to have to deal with all of the hand finishing later. Then I stitched the ruffles together. There were eight panels of ruffle and I stitched these together using French seams as well. Thank you. 
Once that was done, I marked and stitched in the ruffle pen tucks. Now, here I'm making a small error. I did end up finding it and fixing it later, but I'm only stitching a quarter inch away from the edge when it needs to be a half inch pen tuck. So I do eventually figure that out and fix it later, but just for any of my eagle-eyed viewers. And then I steamed the pen tucks on the ruffle flat. Again, love this process. So satisfying. This is another reason why I chose to use cotton instead of silk. I think it's a little bit harder to treat and cotton is going to breathe a lot more. So since I know I'm gonna be wearing this in Florida, I want to make sure that I have at least some breathability and since the outer garments will be silk, it makes sense to have the undergarments be some form of cotton. I then pinned on the edging lace, which did come from Mood in just a couple of days, and does match the insertion lace. So I just pinned it down every couple of inches across my ironing board, no big deal. Once the edging lace was all pinned in place, I stitched it down really quickly by machine. I'm going to fold the hem under and stitch that part in by hand, so it didn't matter that this part was ugly machine stitches. They won't be seen in the final product, so it didn't really matter to me. Also, that would have been a lot of hand sewing to deal with, and at this point in the project, I kind of just wanted it to be done. Here I am doing that double fold hem. That's one reason I really like cotton. Once you iron and steam it into place, it kind of wants to stay where it's put. I ended up hand finishing all of these seams later off camera because that was really, really dull. <laughs> Then the ruffle got stitched together to make a big loop, and this was also done using a French seam just to prevent me from having to hand finish even more seams later on. I set my machine to the longest stitch that it could possibly do and stitched in a bunch of gathering stitches. On the flounce, I just did one really, really long gathering stitch. This worked. Uh, it wasn't ideal and it wasn't elegant, but it did work. And then I needed to take a break. He is clearly a vicious, bloodthirsty beast. I came back home and pinned my flounces to the yoke. What I ended up doing was pinning the flounce seams to the center front and center back and then the side seams. This made it a little bit easier for me to figure out where the gathering needed to be and how far I needed to gather everything down. It worked, it took a little while, but it did work and it looks very pretty.
Once the flounce was fully gathered down, I took it back to the machine and stitched it into place. I did this as a French seam, just so that I wouldn't have to deal with finishing that gathered edge later on. And it was a matter of gathering the ruffle down using the same process. Two rows of gathering stitches at the longest stitch length. In this case, I actually stitched the ruffle to be four panels instead of one really, really, really long gathering stitch. That way I could more easily adjust each individual section to the proper length. The hard part here was because there were so many gathering threads being put in, it was hard to figure out which thread led to gathering the actual portion that I was attempting to gather. It took a little bit of finagling and back and forth, tugging and all of that, but I just floor trolled it up for an afternoon and my back paid for it the next day. Once that was all in place, I just stitched the ruffle down and pretty much called it good. I just had to do the waistband and the closures and this thing was done. Speaking of the waistband, I took it and ironed three of the sides in by about half an inch and then stitched the unfolded side to the raw edge of the waist. I also had to pleat this into place. I did just did this by eye. I could have tried to make everything look perfect, but honestly, nobody's gonna notice. Once everything was stitched in place, I simply ironed and steamed it flat and then folded over the waistband so that the edges would be covered. Once I had ironed it all flat, I sat down back at my computer and stitched it down by hand. This just leads to a very nice finish where you don't see any of the machine stitches. Last but certainly not least, I put in the closures. I wish I had had some slightly smaller hooks and eyes, but I made do with what I have. These are just size two nickel plated hooks and eyes used on the waistband. So there you have it. We've made a super fun petticoat, and personally, I love how it came out. It's not perfect. There are a few things that I would love to change if I could do things over again, but overall, I'm thrilled with it, and I love how good it looks over the bustle that I made, even though I'm still not happy about the bustle. I'm going to have to remake it. I found out when I was... Um, trying on the petticoat that unfortunately the bones aren't sitting right anymore and I do need to remake the bustle but that's that's okay that's a that's a weekend project but the lace the frills I'm just I'm so so happy with how this came out and I hope you guys are too so the next few steps are a little bit more complicated I've been trying to get videos out about once a month because once a month is about as much as I can do, but those were for very simple garments. So next up is going to be the skirt and the bodice, which I'm super excited to get started on, but because they're a little bit more complicated, we may have some different videos coming up over the next couple of months instead. Um, 
in particular, I'm thinking about doing one to show you kind of the inspiration that I have for this design. Um, and a quick rundown of what fabrics I'm using. And potentially a video all about the history of the Haunted Mansion, which I think is going to be a ton of fun. I'm a huge Disney nerd. I'm a huge Haunted Mansion nerd. So I could go on a really long rant about that. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully I can have some actual sewing content up for you soon. But until then, stay safe, y'all.